Hi, I'm Dr. Montania. We're going to be continuing this series on managing menopause. In this section, we're going to go through the hormone cycles, foreign hormones, where they come from, how they affect us, and finally, what goes on with hormone types of therapies. So when we start to look at hormone cycles, all hormone cycles basically function the same way, whether we're talking reproductive hormones, adrenal hormones, thyroid hormones, growth hormones. There is a part in our brain called the hypothalamus. It's up in the, in the side up in here. It registers all of our circulating mineral levels, gas levels like oxygen, carbon dioxide, and our hormone levels. With the hormones, that hypothalamus, it in turn communicates with the pituitary gland, little P-shaped gland right in the center of the head. That pituitary sends out little hormone signals to all our hormone-producing glands. And those signals are either keep it up, you're doing a good job, slow down, we've got too much, or speed it up, we need a little bit more. In the reproductive cycle, first hormone that goes out of the pituitary is called follicle-stimulating hormone. In a female, that starts to get an egg ready to ovulate it. There's a bunch of cells around each egg that start to produce a fluid. As that fluid starts to build up, the cells that are making that fluid start to produce more and more estrogen. As that estrogen starts to climb, it hits a certain peak. The hypothalamus registers that and goes, oh, it's time to ovulate. It lets out a, another hormone called luteinizing hormone. That means to ovulate. If the egg gets released out of the place where it's being prepared, that's called ovulation. The cells around that change into something else called a corpus luteum. The corpus luteum then produces progesterone. Commonly, as a woman starts to get close to menopause, she quits ovulating, and when she doesn't ovulate, the corpus luteum doesn't form, and she no longer produces progesterone. Progesterone helps normalize all the, the reactions that the estrogen creates. Women in their younger years, when they start to have cycles change, the same kind of thing happens. If she doesn't ovulate, she doesn't produce progesterone. If she doesn't produce progesterone, her physiology can never normalize. It's always inflamed, always sore, and emotions rage, different things like that. So when we look at the hormones in a female, estrone is called E1. It's the most common hormone present after menopause. It it's a hormone that's responsible for all the bad things, cancer, breast changes, uh, fluid buildup, cramps, different things like that. E2 is estradiol. It's the most common hormone during a women's cycling years. Uh, it helps the uterus get prepared for birth. It's responsible for the uterine or the more of the cervical secretions to keep the reproductive tract wet and lubricated. It's responsible for all the cyclical issues and the breast changes that go on with those cycles. Estradiol is called estri E3, or estriol, excuse me, is E3. It's produced primarily by the placenta during pregnancy. E3 is the most gentle of all three of the estrogens, and it creates the most gentle responses of all three of the estrogens. As we'll see later on, if estrogen therapy is to ever be considered, it would make a lot more sense to supplement with estriol E3 than it would be estrone E1. But within our society, we have all these fake estrogens. They're called xenoestrogens. Those are in plastics. That's what makes plastics stay together and stay soft so they're not really brittle. BPA is probably the most common chemical put into plastics. And a lot of research has been done on how carcinogenic that stuff is. Well, there's BPA is in a whole class of elements that are put into plastics. There's APA. It's, it's past M right now. And the other ones may be as toxic or more toxic. There's just not as much research in it. So even though some plastic says it's BPA-free, doesn't mean that it's safe. What liberates the BPA and the other related compounds from plastics is heat. So the last thing you want to do is subject any plastic 
around anything you're going to ingest with heat. So microwaving plastic containers of food in it is really something that can mess up our hormones quite a bit. Then there's phylate esters. Those are typically in PCBs. Those are uh, fluids that insulate electrical things. We have insecticides and herbicides. Those are primarily xenoestrogen-like compounds also with estrogen-like responses. Lotions and creams, makeups, those are full of parabens. Those are full of estrogens. And one of the biggest sources of toxic estrogens that we can take in is receipt paper. If we handle receipt paper with wet fingers, the absorption rate increases many fold and can really mess up hormones, whether we're male or female. Along with that, U.S. manufacturer legally released 271 million pounds of pharmaceuticals into our waterways every year. That means it gets into our drinking water. That can affect us in a very huge way. They did something up in uh, one of the remote lakes up in Ontario, Canada. They put some contraceptive pills, 17 ethanol estradiol, into a lake, and they watched what happened with aquatic life. They started to notice a huge change in the reproductive organs of the fish. They started to become hermaphroditic. That means they, they started to display both sexual organs in the fish. Testicular atrophy was quite noted, and some of the female reproductive organs were starting to be noted in the fish in that lake. Fox News did a cover story quite a while back on xenoestrogens uh, coming in from women's birth control pills. That gets into our drinking water, goes through the ground supply, gets in our drinking water. It's one of the biggest causes of prostate cancer in men. It's really huge. Another big cause of that is um, HPV. In fact, HPV is implicated in colorectal cancers, uterine cancers, prostate cancers, pretty much all of lower abdominal cancers. Big link with that also. Then we have herbicides. Uh, one of the biggest used herbicide all over the world is called atrazine. Atrazine has been shown to change male frogs into female frogs. It can produce fertilizable eggs that can turn into tadpoles. It's highly mutagenic. In other words, it creates, can create great deformities. You commonly will see frogs with multiple pairs of legs on one end, different things like that. Atrazine is very commonly used in corn. And virtually all the feed corn that's used in our country has been sprayed with atrazine, unless you get some kind of an organic source. So atrazine has been shown to decrease testosterone levels in all of the animal kingdom. So with that, we're looking at insects, reptiles, birds, fish, and mammals. It disrupts the hormones in all females. It makes both male and female unable to produce testosterone. When that doesn't happen, oh, we don't get proper protein building going on in either one of us. It kills the sexual drive in both males and females in the whole animal kingdom. Then we have a fair amount of xenoestrogens just normally occurring in food. We, we see because of what's going on with our food supply, being really distorted all over the world. In China, girls are starting to hit puberty as young as eight years of age. Over in, in England, women are noticing that their breast size has increased and they have to increase the bra cup size one size over there. It might sound wonderful as you're young, but think of what's going on with the inflammation in the breast tissue that's predisposing it to nightmare issues called cancer down the road. And that's really not a good, healthy thing that anybody would really want to deal with. Then we start looking at some of the other foods that, that have a lot of estrogen in there. Flax is full of estrogen. It's, it's got a phenomenal amount in it. Soy has quite a bit of estrogen in it. Legumes have varying amounts of estrogen in it, depending on which, which legume you're, you're looking at. 
And then there's uh, pharmaceutical estrogens that can become very, very, very toxic and create all kinds of nightmares. When we look at feedlots, when cattle are in feedlots, about a third of the cattle in our country, the U.S. of A, are they, they use estrogen supplements. Sometimes it's implants, sometimes it's supplements in their food. One of the supplements they use is a pharmaceutical estrogen called Xeranol. Xeranol has been linked to cancer from those people that eat beef and they use it. They, they try and use estrogens. They're using estrogens on crops to try and increase the growth of crops. They use it in the whole animal industry. It allows a cow to be finished three months earlier so people can feed them for three months less time. They make a whole bunch more money with three months less of food before it hits the table. Then we have these plastic issues. There's about uh, 280 million tons of plastics that are, are made out of every year. Only about a third of those plastics are recovered for reuse and recycling. There's a huge amount of plastic that gets dumped into our major waterways. The ocean is littered with plastic. Anybody that's been on a cruise ship come into different harbors where the, the tides don't move stuff out and you'll, you'll be in a sea of plastics. It's, it's amazing. And there's little things called zertles. Those are, are what plastics are made out of. Um, they're, they're, they're melted so they, they can make it into injection molds to make all the plastic products that we have. They find those zertles floating free in the North Sea, remote areas. It's, it's amazing. When we look at the hormone estradiol, it typically stimulates all kinds of growth. It excites women's tissues to, to stimulate growth. And it'll excite men's tissues too. Men make est estradiol also. There's a one form of pharmaceutical estradiol called ethanol estradiol. It's about 100 times more potent than the natural estradiol that women make. That's what's commonly in oral contraceptives, different things like that. When we start to look at estrogen therapies, there's a warning label on the Premarin that says the health risks of long-term use of the combination of estrogen and progesterone clearly outweigh the benefits. And we look at the, the estrogens, E1 is estrone, it's primary hormone in menopause. E2 is estradiol, the primary hormone when a woman is cycling. E3 is estriol, the primary hormone in pregnancy. When we look at Premarin, it's primarily come from the hormones that come out of horse urine. Premarin is primarily estrone, about 75 to 80% estrone. Equilin, which is a horse hormone, is totally toxic to women. It's about 6 to 15% of Premarin and estradiol and two other horse estrogens make up the rest. When we start to look at some of the hormone supplement cream, Swanson's Estriol Cream, if you look at the list of ingredients on the label, there's about 20 things in their label. Not one of those is a hormone. It's all chemicals making whatever their product is, but it's certainly not a healthy hormone product. It's just a bunch of chemicals in there trying to promote a hormonal reaction. This is a what the shape of all the precursors to our hormones look like and our hormones. Uh, cortisol looks like this, the precursors to make, make our hormones look like the ester Estrogens look like this. Testosterone looks like this. You got three hexagons and one pentagon that make up this molecule. There's numbers as you go around those, and what makes one one hormone another another hormone is where what's called a ligand, something connects to one of those points as it goes around. The FDA recommends that hormone therapy never be used to prevent heart disease. 
and if it ever is used for another reason, it should be done at the smallest dose for the shortest period of time possible. When we start looking at how we make hormones later in life, we convert a precursor hormone that's made from the adrenal gland called androstenedione into estrone. That increases as a woman gets older and increases as she deposits more fat. That'll create endometrial pathology or uterine problems that can lead to hysterectomy issues and all that. That always happens when a critical level is exceeded in the blood levels. Morning level of Premarin, estrogens increase the risk of endometrial cancer. Use it basically at your own risk. When we start to look at uh, what some of the studies go, there is a clear link between estrogen progesterone therapy and breast cancer.